fingers crossed. Um, I want to talk about um, using expect with coroutines. Um, and um, I'd like to start by asking how many people here have written scripts with expect? Any, any, any time, any time, yeah, uh, quite a few. And how many people have written scripts using coroutines? Uh, a reasonable number. Has anybody written scripts using expect together with coroutines? Uh, not so far. Um, okay, that, that's what this is about. Um, I, I tried to find if anybody had, had tried to combine these two things before, and I couldn't find anything, but I wasn't sure if that was just because I wasn't looking in the right places or searching in the right way. Um, okay, a um, little bit of background as to what uh, I'm trying to do. Um, I work for a large financial financial data processing company. Um, they're not very keen on Tickle, but um, they let me use it for a little tools here and there, as long as I don't put it in anything mission critical. Um, so one, one thing that I have used it for is a little tool to um, try and dig out um, information to try and track down uh, problems that happen on production machines, um, which can be usually involves trying to find the log of the relevant processes and dig back through that to see exactly what happened up to the point when things started to go wrong. Um, and that can be a bit of a job to find because we have now uh, lots of different server processes and each one of those typically runs um, distributed across maybe half a dozen machines, and each machine might be running 10 or 20 instances of that process. Um, and these processes are logging the files every so often roll, um, either just because of a certain time limit or because they've, they've reached a, a size limit. Um, so when you, when you get a notification of a problem, you don't necessarily know what, where the transaction that's gone wrong was processed. Um, uh, so it's become a bit of a job to, to find that. Um, and there are, of course, other uh, products around that try to do uh, log management and searching for you, but um, they have some uh, restrictions and, and um, um, uh, not always available uh, where and when you need them. Um, so it seems to be useful to, to just build something to do this. Uh, oop. Okay. 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 Um, so um, another complication in that environment is that because um, our production machines are processing um, financial transactions which are quite sensitive information and, and uh, uh, confidential, um, they're quite uh, tightly locked down. We can't just log in and run whatever we like on them. Um, to actually get access to a production machine, you have to go through a particular um, procedure that uh, logs the fact that you're logging in and um, restricts what you can do once you get in, um, which makes it tricky to actually use any of the usual kind of tools that you might do if you had free access to the machine. Um, but it's possible to automate that whole login procedure by using expect. Um, so uh, that was my my starting point, um, uh, but uh, so I wanted to have a script that would log into a production machine, go and look in a particular set of files for a particular pattern that you're looking for. Um, but at the same time, you have lots of machines, um, and sometimes some of them are down, or for some reason they're running very slow. 
um, and you want to get these results back as quick as possible. So you don't want to just do one, one, one at a time. You want to do them all in parallel. Um, and you could get the parallelism just by kicking off lots of separate instances of expect. Um, but then you would have the problem of um, how do you correlate the information that's coming back from all of these. Uh, because what I actually want to do is to get all these results and stick them in a GUI um, and where I can sort of drill down to what I'm really interested in. Um, so I really want to do it from one process that's going to do all this stuff in parallel. So expect has always had support for um, managing multiple connections in parallel. Um, there's a, a command called expect background where you can specify um, uh, handlers for patterns that are going to appear on specific channels that you've got open or a whole, whole range of channels. Um, and that uh, then gets run from the event loop when you're waiting. Um, and when the thing that you're waiting for happens, that handler will run and process it. Um, but that means structuring your script that you want to log in and do some sequence of operations on each machine um, into a form that can be run in response to these events, which brings you to the, the, the kind of well-known um, inversion of control uh, problem that uh, it becomes much harder to write and read um, because you have to write each step of this process um, as an event handler that's going to be triggered when the previous uh, step completes. Um, and that can be done. Um, but if you're trying to keep track of state for each connection, um, then you don't really, really have anywhere obvious to put that because there's not a continuous flow of control for each uh, machine that you're dealing with. Um, you have to kind of store it away somewhere and then pull it back the next time you need it. Um, so you end up doing awkward things like uh, lots of global arrays indexed on the connection, the spawn ID, or you could do it with objects, but you still have to index them somehow and have a way to find the, the, the corresponding object um, for the connection that you're now handling. Um, okay. So um, that kind of problem is the sort of thing that core routines can be very nice for um, because you can get um, what you can write the processing for one particular machine as a, a script um, in a linear fashion that has its own local variables and state, um, but still suspends at the points when it needs to wait for something to happen and other things can be going on at the same time. So it seems kind of a natural way um, to try and clean this up. Um, but as I was saying, I couldn't find any, any um, record of, of anybody having done that with expect before. So I, I tried to invent something, um, uh, which is not very easy um, because uh, I've done some similar stuff previously with other types of event handling commands after and file event and so on, uh, which is not too difficult. Um, but it's a lot harder with expect because expect um, has um, the plain expect command and the expect background command, which kind of um, mirrors most of that, has lots and lots of options. Um, and it's a kind of flow control command. So. Um, so it, it's quite hard to integrate that with coroutines in a very general way. Um, but um, if you don't need the full generality, I hacked up something uh, which 
uh, was good enough for what I needed, um, which is what I'm going to show in a second. So this is one bit of um, uh, a one bit of, of one um, script which uses this facility. So this is the um, expect script which is handling. Um, uh, this is getting run for one machine after you've gone through the whole business of logging in, which has its own complications. Um, so it's then doing an expect send uh, to get a list of files. Um, uh, it's then using a variable here to uh, accumulate the, the list of files that's going to come back. And then we do this co-expect on the spawn ID, uh, looking for two patterns. One is this op1, which is a uh, prompt that we get for the restricted shell that runs on these machines. So when you see that, you know that the command is finished running. Uh, and this thing is just a pattern to grab um, a line's worth of data. Um, and then you do a, a yield within a while loop. Um, and at that point, um, anything else that's um, set up to happen in core routines can do its thing um, until uh, we get to what we're waiting for on this particular channel, um, which then resumes, comes back to the while, looks at the value that came back, which tells you which of these options were matched. Uh, so it's either a prompt, in which case we're finished the loop and we carry on the next bit, or it's something that's a file name and we append it to this list of files. Then we go on to the next step and we do a similar thing where we do a GZ grep on each of the files that we've found. Um, again, co-expect. Um, but in this case, it's a couple of patterns um, and a loop to process the results that come back from that. So the, the, the tricky bit in here is this co-expect, which is the, the last bit that I'm going to show. Um, which is just this little piece of code. Um, this um, ends up using expect background, um, but it uh, constructs the, the um, arguments to it uh, from the list of patterns that you pass in and the spawn ID that you're operating on, the channel ID, basically. Um, and then it, it constructs um, for each of these patterns um, arguments that are going to look for the pattern. And when that arrives, it's going to um, resume the core routine that you were in um, with uh, an index, which is just getting incremented here, which tells you which of the patterns that were passed in got matched. Um, and the, those cases I showed, I just had two patterns, but you could have half a dozen uh, and then use a switch or something to process them when, when they come back. Um, and then you, having built up the, this set of arguments to expect, you then pass that to expect background. Um, I discovered after a bit that I needed the, to run that in after idle, because otherwise you can get a situation where you call the expect background and it immediately matches and kicks off um, the processing uh, re-entrantly within that, which isn't really what you expect and create causes uh, um, unexpected uh, results. Uh, but once you have that, it works uh, pretty well. Um, and uh, I found that quite a useful thing. Um, the, it doesn't support all the other kind of uh, options that you can have with expect, um, which I didn't happen to need here. The main thing that's not handled at the moment, which would be nice to have, is a timeout option um, on the specific channel uh, to say if this thing doesn't respond within five seconds, then I'm just going to give up on it and uh, report an error or whatever. Um, but maybe later on I'll do that. 
Uh, so that's it. Um. Thank you. So, any questions? So, I suppose one of the caveats are that if the callback procedure, uh, if you go back one page perhaps. Oops. Oh, okay, well. Sorry. The, Hold on. Uh, it, it was that one that had the loop while yield. Uh, and in that case, uh, uh, it, it was using the global variable ex uh, that usually all expect, expect scripts use. Uh, yes, this on uh, this page, yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, one probably needs to take care extra that the expect out will then probably also be overwritten if a different spawn ID has an event running. Um, so I'm well, not sure actually, if this really needs some care or if that's. Uh, no, actually, that, that, that works okay um, because um, when expect matches, it sets. So it's the global expect out. Um, but immediately you then service that. Immediately you come back, you come into this code. So there's, there's nothing, nothing else that, that can interfere between the actual expect callback and this, the uh, wild body running? Uh, no, I don't think there is, no. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, sure then. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. Anyone else? Okay, so okay. thank you, Colin. Right.